Welcome, welcome back to everybody's favorite session, Extra Help with Thermodynamics. So today we're going to be talking about heat engines, refrigerators, and the like. Uh, but first, a little distraction. I'm worried about the kids, homie. Lisa's becoming very obsessive. This morning, I caught her trying to dissect her own raincoat. I know. And this perpetual motion machine she made today is a joke. It just keeps going faster and faster. And Bart isn't doing very well either. He needs boundaries and structure. There's something about flying a kite at night that's so unwholesome. Hello, Mother dear. Oh, that's it. We have to get them back to school. I'm with you, Marge. Lisa, get in here. <laughs> in this house, we obey the laws of thermodynamics. This selected set should give you all of the key information you're going to need to be able to move forward and solve everything else. Um, so today we're going to start uh, with homework problem one, which is 5.20 uh, in the text. And though your text does have a picture, I wasn't able to find the picture for this. The problem reads a reversible power cycle. And again, if you're like me, in your head, you should immediately stop a reversible power cycle. Um, what does that mean? Reversible. Um, when I see reversible, I think we're looking for the maximum efficiency. So that in turn means from an equation set that our sigma is going to be equal to zero. Um, or sigma dot, whether it's continuous or um, uh, uh, state one to state two type of problem. Um, so a reversible power cycle receives energy uh, QH by heat transfer from hot reservoir. The picture in these problems is just about not optional. So before I advocated drawing a picture as it might help you, it is required. In fact, part of your grade will be, can you draw this picture successfully? So if you don't, you're just leaving points on the table and I don't know why. So. Um, we have some Q.H dot H produces some work output. So you're putting that um, heat in and you have to draw the arrows in here. And then there's some cool reservoir TC that uh, the heat is rejected to. And we're going to say that there's some heat flow QC to this cool reservoir. Okay. Um, so in scenario A, which I'm going to draw in red, um, our TH is equal to 1600 Kelvin. Now look at that, they're so nice. They already converted this to Kelvin for you because remember, remember, do not in any circumstances attempt to use any of the equations we're about to play with with non-absolute units. Now, also very important, if you're given an absolute uh, temperature scale like ranking, do not attempt to convert those uh, to Kelvin and then do this calculation. Um, so if you're given something in absolutes or if you're given something in uh, imperial units such as Fahrenheit, um, while it may seem tempting to just go ahead and convert it all to Kelvin and then back again, don't do that. Um, if you're given Fahrenheit, you need to convert it to ranking. If you're given Celsius, you should convert it to Kelvin because that's actually what's going to work with all the other units. Um, it's kind of important that you kind of keep the units together. Anyway, neither here nor there. TC is 400 Kelvin. Um, okay, so in that first example, uh, we're going to have to sort of figure out uh, how to relate these. Now, I know I covered this in the class, but still, the very first thing you should do when you get one of these problems is follow the same steps that we always have. Um, now, for these types of problems, there's not per se assumptions that you want to write down just yet because these are sort of simplified problem skeletons almost. They're like the framework that bound the problem. Uh, but you still have to do everything that we did in class, which means that you have to do an energy balance um, and you have to do a mass balance. It's very, I'm sorry, not a mass balance, an entropy balance. I keep saying that, entropy balance. Super important as, as it's how these problems are solved. I'm going to repeat this one more time, and probably the last time, as to how you're going to produce the energy balance. Um, you are going to take the direction of the arrow, and if the arrow, which I will highlight in red, is 
um, pointing in towards this circle, um, we're going to put a positive sign on that leg of the calculation. And if it's leaving this circle, you're going to have a negative sign on it. Again, do not do this in situations where you don't have this type of cycle and you're not trying to calculate this. All the other same old equations apply. So let's do this. QH is going in, so it's positive Q dot H. Um, QC is leaving, so we're going to subtract that. And work is also leaving, so we're going to subtract that. And all of that is equal to zero. You could have put the zero in the beginning or the end, doesn't matter. Okay, the entropy. We're going to do the same thing, except we're not going to use work, and we're going to add sigma. So let's try that. And of course, all the Qs are going to be divided by their respective temperature reservoirs from which they originated. So kind of the easiest way to do it is just to show it. Um, Q dot H over T dot H uh, minus Q C over T C plus sigma, sigma dot actually, equals zero. Um, please don't get confused and accidentally um, do minus sigma because it would have been minus work. That would be incorrect. Sigma is always added. Okay, so what can we do to rearrange some things? Um, well, in this particular case, uh, the energy balance remains the same for all cases, but there's something particularly special about this case, and it's simply that they said the word reversible, so we know that sigma is equal to zero. So when this term goes to zero, we basically can construe some new relationship that's going to be a little bit helpful to us, and it's q dot h over t dot h is equal to q dot c over t c. Right? So that's going to be helpful, one. Um, so let's go ahead and just tackle our problem um, A, and then we're going to continue onwards. So as I said, for heat engine, we have um, our efficiency, which is defined by Greek letter eta, is equal to Th minus Tc over uh, Th. Um, and so all you have to do is plug in these values. We basically have, what, 1600 minus 400, which is 1200 divided by... Uh, 1600 and that is equal to 0 0.75 so that was pretty easy by the way guys and girls this is about as easy as it gets so um, in the next part of the problem which is part B um, they start to be a little sneaky snake on you by the way pro tip I tend to be a sneaky snake so th is equal to 500 degrees Celsius and TC is equal to 20 degrees Celsius. Um, and then they also say that the work is equal to uh, 1000 kilojoules, also known as a megajoule. Don't forget your um, SI units. Anyway, what they were trying to find out is QH and QC. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. Our very first thing, this is a trap. That's the first thing you have to think of. Your TH needs to be converted um, to an absolute temperature, which is going to be 773. For the sake of um, brevity and clarity on the screen, I'm not adding the 0.15. I would prefer that you put the 0.15 um, for the following reason. Sometimes that omission results in accuracy problems. So um, while I'm not doing it here, and you know, if you were really strapped for time on a test, maybe try to shave that time off, but I would again overwhelmingly encourage you to leave that present. Okay, so what do we know? Um, take a look here. Uh, we have, sorry, seems to have lost my notes here. Um, QH, and this is just taking right from the equation down here after our entropy balance. We have QH over uh, TH, which in this case is 773, equals QC over uh, 293. 
and you're like, well, what do I do now? I have two unknowns and one equation. Well, again, you want to look around and see if there's any other equations that you might be able to use to help you out. And if you look down here, sure, there is. You have an energy balance. So we're going to go ahead and use this energy balance now as we've already used uh, the entropy balance to see sort of what we can do. So the only thing that we're given is uh, work. So I'm going to move that to the other side, and I'm going to say our other equation is work is equal to uh, QH minus QC. But we know what work is equal to. It's equal, as they told us in the problem, to 1,000 kilojoules. Okay, so now we have another equation. Great. So I think you guys can see where this is going now. Um, it's probably pretty easy for me to go ahead and take this term, move it to the other side, and now I can have QH is equal to QC plus 1,000 kilojoules. And then you have to stop and ask yourself, does that make sense? Well, yeah, sure. The heat that you're wasting plus the work that you're getting out is equal to the heat that you're putting in. Great. But now, of course, I can plug this back into this part of the equation. Um, now, of course, alternatively, if you have a calculator and you know what you're doing, you absolutely are able to set up a set of simultaneous equations um, if you want. Totally up to you. Uh, but, uh, that's, by the way, that's one method of doing this. The other method I guess you could have done um, is to basically create a direct relationship like QH is equal to 2.638QC. Um, and that's basically just sort of cross multiplying over here and um, getting this simplified so that you can plug it into uh, the energy balance. So there's kind of two ways to do it. However you do it, you're gonna get the right answers. Uh, QC is going to be equal to 610.4 kilojoules. QH is going to be equal to 1610.4 kilojoules. Pro tip, you can absolutely check to see whether your answer makes any sense in these problems super easily. And it should be very clear exactly how you're going to do that. If you wrote your energy balance right, then your energy balance should sum to zero, right? So if I take and you can actually see this pretty clearly. If I take my um, QH, which is 1610.4, and I subtract the QC, which is right here, 610.4, and then I subtract again, I'm just following the energy balance equation, my 1000 kilojoules that's given in the problem. I think you can see what's gonna happen here. Of course, it will equal zero. This is a true statement, um, and therefore, this doesn't per se guarantee that you get the problem right, but it definitely also checks to see if you made any silly arithmetic mistakes along the way. So if you have time and you're sitting there um, and you're bored and everybody else is taking a quiz and you're done, this is definitely a good thing to go ahead and try to do. So um, those are answers to that part of the problem. So moving on, um, part C, uh, let's take a look here. Um, so it said if the efficiency is 60% and TC is 40 degrees Fahrenheit. So let's go ahead and do that. So for part C, if eta is equal to 0 0.6 um, and TC is equal to 40 degrees Fahrenheit, um, what is TH and, uh, in degrees Fahrenheit? Okay, so we could handle that as well. So, very first, very important thing. Uh, we want to use our same efficiency relationship where the efficiency, which in this case is 0 0.6, is equal to TH minus TC over TH. Um, or, and then there's lots of other sort of equations that you can play around with. Um, there's tons in the book. I like to just remember the one because then it starts to get very confusing, but 
Um, I'll write another one here because I think some people have been asking me to show different ways to solve problems. Personally, I actually don't like knowing a hundred different ways to solve the problem. I like having what I like to call master keys, which are things that always work. And then this is like that one situation that you have to know. But just to show you that there's options. Um, so in this case, this is equal to 0 0.6. I'm just moving this all over. Um, sorry, my numbers look kind of weird. Um, so what can I do now? Um, I can move the one over and it will give me something that looks a little like TC over TH is equal to 0 0.4. Um, or TH is equal to TC over 0 0.4. If you're not comfortable with some of the math that I'm doing, um, <clears throat> just be very careful um, is sort of the advice that I would give you um, when it comes to this algebra. I tend to be pretty comfortable with algebra. If you're not, use your calculator to try to help you use um, the solve command if you don't know how to do that. I think almost everybody's scientific calculator, like the Casio series and the TI series for sure, all have solve functions. Definitely worth about five minutes on YouTube while, you know, instead of watching cats play with uh, yarn balls or somebody getting hit by shopping carts or some other nonsense, you probably can definitely use the ability or skill to use the solve command. Anyway, neither here nor there. The trap is still set. This is 40 degrees Fahrenheit. No, do not use that. Um, instead, what you want to do is convert that to ranking. Um, so we're going to just say um, 40. And again, I'm approximating here 460. Please use the more accurate approximation divided by 0.4 is equal to th is equal to 1250 degrees ranking and at that point you stop and you're like okay great I got the answer time to box it eh, it's definitely not a bad idea to recheck to make sure you answered the actual problem because when you read the problem you will find that it is asking in units of Fahrenheit and so if you put this down of course I will take off credit because that seems to be my jam that's actually 790 degrees Fahrenheit. That is the final answer. Cool. Well, last but not least, um, and I think I have just enough space to squeeze it in there. Um, this is just the English example. I'm gonna kind of just truncate it. We have some efficiency of 0 0.4, and we're gonna use our same relationship that we had above equals one minus TC over TH. Again, you can totally use the other equation. It just, is for the case of simplicity here. Um, TH is equal to 727 degrees C, which is 1000 K. Um, rearranging, we get TC equals 0 0.6 times 1000, which is 600 Kelvin. Converting back, we're going to get our final answer of 327 degrees Celsius. Um, I'm not going to go over temperature conversions if you didn't get that by now. Again, those are sort of my like seven deadly fears. If you don't know how to write the energy balance by now, if you don't know how to interpolate, there's probably nothing I can do at this point. Um, so moving onwards, if this thing, okay, that's nice. It took like seven clicks. Um, so let's do problem 5.26 from the book, which is homework problem three. Okay, so um, first looking at this problem, it looks scary AF when you look at it, right? Because, I mean, look at this thing. It's just a nightmare. We got some temperature reservoir all the way up here. Um, and they tell us this is TH and it equals 1000 degrees ranking um, it continues on and then there's some heat engine which is cycle one basically and then there's some work output from that cycle and the waste heat goes into some intermediary reservoir um, of some temperature which we don't yet know 
Um, and then there's more heat flow into a secondary cycle that goes out W to a final reservoir down here at QC, I'm sorry, at TC, which is equal to 400 degrees ranking. This is QC, this is QH. Okay, so let's read it. Two reversible cycles. Stop. The moment you hear that word, reversible cycle, write that down. Great. Sigma is equal to zero. If you don't get into that habit, like if you hear the word adiabatic and you think Q is equal to zero, you're going to just you're going to kill yourself. So um, produce the same network W cycle, right? Oops. So on these types of energy balance equations, it's super critical for you to read and then figure out is what I just read an equation. So let's listen to that again. Two reversible cycles produce the same net work. What they're saying is this W cycle up here, which we're going to call, um, I don't know, I guess we'll call it W cycle 2 versus W cycle 1, produce the same work. That doesn't seem like it's very important information, but it's actually one of the key equations that you're going to need to do this. Um, it sometimes helps to figure out all of the unknowns that you have, but there's not quite as many as you would think. Um, for example, the Q right here, and I'm going to highlight this in green. So this Q right here, if you notice, there's nowhere else for it to go except right down here. So this T, uh, this intermediary temperature reservoir, presumably, and by the way, that's a good uh, assumption if it didn't even tell you that, but I didn't even read that far into the problem, is well insulated. So what that kind of tells me is that this Q has to be equal to this Q because that's the only way that that temperature would be able to hold at whatever temperature it's at. But anyway, let's just keep reading. Um, but from that work statement, we can conclude one of the key equations that we're going to have, even before we do our energy balance or anything, which we absolutely still have to do, um, is that work in one is equal to work in two. Very important. Let's keep reading. The first cycle receives energy um, QH by heat transfer from the hot reservoir and rejects energy Q by heat transfer to a reservoir at an intermediate temperature. The secondary cycle receives Q from heat transfer from the reservoir and rejects it to QC. Um, all energy transfers are positive in the directions of the arrows. This is reminding you of that super important rule. All of these equations are subject to um, the, the arrow direction. So that, that's actually really important. The, so they're asking you to determine the intermediate temperature, um, the thermal efficiency of a single reversible power cycle operating between um, the hot and cold. Okay, so we're going to start doing all this. So again, you look at this problem immediately. The first thing you want to do is freeze up and cry and, you know, go rock in a fetal position in a corner and that might help except it probably won't um but really ask yourself what is different here than was the case in every other system that we've done so you have to ask yourself can i write an energy balance if you almost blot out the bottom half um if you pretend that this intermediary er energy um reservoir or temperature reservoir was t c could we solve this? So again, if that intermediary reservoir was TC, we know exactly what we would do as our energy balance. Um, so it's really kind of important to write those out, whatever those intermediary energy balances may be. So, oops, wrong color. Uh, so we can say QH is equal to work one plus Q. Can everybody see where I got that? If you can't, 
let me ask if this feels a little bit more comfortable. Does it feel comfortable if I say zero equals uh, QH minus Q minus W? And at that point, I can move the QH to the other side. At that point, I have minus signs in front of everything. I can multiply the entire equation set by negative one, and I end up right back over here. So sometimes I will take some of those little, I wouldn't call these shortcut steps, they're just steps from people that are familiar with this, but neither here nor there. So that was this top half, if you can imagine that. Now when you look at this bottom half, there's a whole second power cycle, and we wanna do the exact same thing to this. Um, again, if you're not comfortable, I can write it uh, both ways. We're going to write this other energy balance equation exactly like what we would normally do, which means zero equals what's coming in, which is our Q, um, and then what's leaving, which is minus QC minus W2. Okay, and of course, that we can also simplify to Q is equal to W2 plus QC. Okay, we're doing good. Um, we gotta think what other basic relationships can we establish? Well, we gotta do entropy balances, right? Because those so far have been our energy balances And we could do exactly the same thing that we would have normally done as our entropy balance. So continue onwards, um, number four. Uh, we could do the entropy balance of the top half. Um, if you remember from the previous slide, I came up with this sort of uh, I want to say simplification, but you know what? I'm going to actually write it all out just to make sure that you guys get the idea for it. Um, our general entropy balance, if we wanted to entropy balance the top part of this, we're going to do the same thing with the arrows. So we have QH coming in over TH uh, minus Q. It's not QC because we want to make sure that we are using this, just the upper half of this cycle. Don't try to do the whole cycle at once. Uh, so just Q over T plus sigma is equal to zero. So hopefully everybody could see that. But from here we know that sigma is equal to zero. So when sigma is equal to zero we know that we can also rearrange this equation to form this um, yes, it's red. I can say that this is blue. So we can then say QH over TH equals Q over T. Great. What does this mean to us in this problem though? Well, we actually do have some of the numbers for this, right? We don't have many of them, but we have something, right? We do have TH, we know what TH is. Um, it's given to us in an absolute unit already, so we could throw it right in. Um, I'm going to say now that QH over a thousand, and that's just TH that was given to us in the problem up here in this upper reservoir, um, is equal to Q over T. So that's that upper cycle one now completely established. There's one more equation that we have to write because we didn't do the entropy balance for the lower cycle. Um, and that, I think you guys can see it. Um, it's gonna look almost the same except you wanna follow the same form. If you're not comfortable, again, I highly recommend that you write it out. Um, I'm just gonna write the sort of output from that here and it's gonna be Q over T is equal to QC over 400. And 400 was given in the problem as well. So what are we gonna do here? We still have a huge mess. Um, 
At this point, it's kind of a good sanity check to see what we need to know. What do we need to know to be able to solve this problem? So what don't we know, basically? Well, we don't know t. We don't know what q is. We don't know what qh is. We don't know what qc is. We don't know what work one is. And we don't know what work two is. So this is six unknowns. Looks bad, right? Well, it's maybe not that bad. We do know that work one is equal to work two. So as soon as we get one of those, we're gonna do a little bit better. Yeah. Um, at that point, what we can start to do is start remixing things because luckily these are also interrelated by the energy balances. Um, so by combining these equations, I can prove to you, let's take a look um, at what we can do. I can hopefully prove that I can produce some new knowledge. And I'd really like to leave this to you to experiment. That way I'm not giving you the whole goose here. So hopefully you guys can see that this is a true statement. And also combining a bit more um, as this term and this term look extremely similar. We can sort of just splice those bad boys right together. And we can also come up with the second axiom that QH over 1000 is equal to QC over 400. So things look somewhat interesting right now, but not quite there yet, right? Because sort of everything is floating around and it's still over-specified. Um, or I'm sorry, it's under-specified, not over-specified because we don't yet know one of these variables. We still have too many unknowns. There's three unknowns in these resultant equations and there's two equations. So this is where your Jedi powers really need to kick in. You need to take a leap of faith. We have to fix one of the cues and everything else will fall into place. Now, I'm gonna say this with almost bated breath. This is a super dangerous thing. Um, whenever you're about to take a leap of faith, you have to make sure that you're taking a real leap of faith. On the quiz, a couple of you guys decided to take all sorts of interesting leaps of faith when you were in that scared and alone moment. Um, this is occasionally an area where you have to sort of have almost an initial guess. Um, and the reason we can do this, the only reason we can do this, uh, is because what they asked for ultimately is temperature. They asked for the temperature. So because of that, all these numbers scale uniformly. Just like if I said something had an efficiency of 50%, that doesn't say anything about how much power it produces. It could produce one watt at 50% efficiency, or it could be a huge system that makes, you know, 10,000 kilowatts at 50% efficiency. So you basically have to fix one of these numbers. Now, is that the only thing you could do? No. You could do a lot more complex math um, and solve this sort of in a simultaneous way, canceling all of this out. I actually discourage this method because uh, the algebra required is you really need to be on point with your algebra. So what I'm going to do at this point, because there's so many unknowns, I'm just going to say arbitrarily that Q, what's going on? this again. Why? Every time. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to say that Q should be equal to a thousand. 
it actually doesn't matter what you pick in this because all of these numbers cancel out. You could have picked one, you could have picked one million, you could have picked a hundred. A bad number to pick is a negative number or zero or infinity. Those are all very bad numbers to pick or an imaginary number, I guess. Yeah, don't do that. Besides that, everything else will be fine. So at that point, immediately you should be able to see that all sorts of answers start to pop out. Um, because if I plug in that to be the case, uh, sorry, I'm gonna actually specify QH just so I could jump right into this part of the problem. When the pen messed up, I see that it didn't um, write down what it, my brain was thinking. Um, so by specifying that, what else happens? Immediately you can see that if I told you that um, QH is a thousand. By the way, why did I pick a thousand? This should be very clear as to why I picked a thousand because I'm lazy and I like doing easy math. What instantly does QC have to be if this has to be true? This value is one. So this value has to be one and there's only one number as far as I know in the natural number scale that solves that, that is 400 degrees. So if, um, sorry, not 400 degrees, um, 400 BTUs. I apologize, you really should have units on this. Even I can get messed up on it. So if this QC is equal to 400 degrees, I'm sorry, 400 BTUs. I'm gonna get this right at some point. Um, then we can plug everything back into the other equations and start working out what's going to happen. Because, uh, let's see here, QH plus QC is equal to 2Q. So that means that Q is equal to 700 BTUs. And also, because we have this other relationship where we have Q over T is equal to QH over 1000, which I just took from the upper uh, equation four. Uh, we can now plug in, because we have everything else, and we can get T, which is 700 degrees ranking. When do you take a leap of faith is then the question. Um, when you're absolutely certain that you have exhausted the number of equations. Uh, the probably most tricky equation, which I actually put first because of experience, but you might have not seen was this one, which was super important to be able to get the answer. Um, basically uh, critically needed that. So the last little part that they, um, I think, are asking for are the efficiencies, and I think that should be pretty clear. Um, for the top case, your efficiency is uh, just 1,000 minus 700 over 1,000, which is 0 0.3. So that's your efficiency of power cycle 1. Your efficiency of power cycle 2 is 700 minus 400 over 700, or a nice round 0 0.43. So, also, if you wanted to calculate it, um, again, plugging back into all these e equations, you can extract work. Work 1 is equal to work 2, which is equal to 300 BTUs. So, this is basically how we're able to uh, work out a lot of these types of problems. Um, of course, if somebody asks you what the network is of the whole system, um, that's going to be work one plus work two, which uh, is going to equal 600. There was no time unit, so I actually am omitting it. Okay, last but not least for today, problem five. Um, fuel energy is available fancy way of saying supplied um, at 2000 degrees Fahrenheit at a local power uh, plant. Okay, so I, I kind of get this idea that we can almost begin drawing our picture. We have some 2000 degrees Fahrenheit. By the way, a very good idea the moment you see that for one of these problems, go ahead and convert that to 
our good friend ranking so that we know that we're not going to mess anything else up. Uh, what is the maximum work that can be produced for each BTU of fuel energy um, if it is winter and the surroundings are at 40 degrees Fahrenheit? So this is actually kind of interesting. The surroundings in this context are actually the TC. And that's something kind of very tricky to be able to see. So you have some um, energy cycle and then it's dumping the waste heat into the surroundings. So um, the TC in this context is 40 degrees Fahrenheit or 500 degrees uh, ranking because that's the surroundings effectively. Um, now, if you read very carefully, what it says is what's the maximum work. So again, whenever the maximum work, I'm hearing also the maximum efficiency so that this is most likely the reversible case. Um, and so we're gonna be able to produce work for each BTU of fuel energy. So this is where the energy is coming in for each BTU of fuel energy. So what they're saying is here, this is one. Okay. Um, but as we continue reading, if this work is used to maintain a residence at 80 degrees Fahrenheit, how much energy, ideally, fancy way of saying it is still reversible, can be delivered to the residence for each BTU of fuel energy? Okay. So how are we going to keep the residence at 80 degrees Fahrenheit? Um, the way I read that, of course, is that there's going to be a heat pump. Um, and so there's some work that this power plant is producing and that work is coming out of the power plant and it's going into a heat pump cycle. So in this heat pump, we have our house, maybe like house. And um, maybe we're having a house party because it's kind of cold. 80 degrees Fahrenheit should be probably kind of uncomfortably warm, but eh, some people are kind of weird about that. 80 degrees R, and that's coming up from our other cycle right over here. And we're pumping heat from the outside. And on this outside area, um, it's still 40 degrees or 500 degrees ranking. Okay. So at this point, of course, you probably want to cry, but don't. Um, you can break this down. Uh, the best way to do this, of course, is to clearly label and have unique variables for everything. So I'm going to say QH1, QC1, QC2, and QH2. Notice that my variable names make a lot of sense. Um, they are exactly where you would expect them to be, and therefore they're kind of really easy to follow. So what does this all mean? Um, we're going to do the same things that we've done before. Um, and the very important thing that, to kind of see when you look at a problem like this is you look at this just like the last quiz and it looks like it's impossible. But always ask yourself in a problem, can something be solved independently? Now, in the last problem, you sort of needed both cycles um, because there was too much unknown. You didn't know the temperature of the reservoir, the intermediary reservoir. But if you look at this, could you tell me what the efficiency of the power cycle is? If you just blot out the entire right-hand side of this, um, the, the heat pump, and just look at the power cycle, could you tell me the efficiency? The answer is hopefully, yeah, absolutely, you could tell me the efficiency. It's just a function of temperature because this is a reversible case. And you could look at the other side and um, ask what's the efficiency there. And the answer is, yeah, of course you can tell me that too because it's just a function of the temperature. The problem on the right-hand side though is if you look at it very carefully is I have three unknown variables and I have two things that I do know. But if I look on the left side, I have two unknown variables because they told me QH means per BTU per one BTU. So I actually have 
only two unknowns there. So if you ask me where I would start, that's where I would start because that is a much more comfortable area for me to start. So let's do our energy balance um, for the heat engine. So we do this exactly the same way we do everything else. Um, we have zero is equal to the QH coming in minus and that's QH1. It's super important that you follow that notation, whatever it, that notation is that you've selected, W. Now, the reason I haven't picked two Ws is because this W leaving the power plant is the same as the W entering the heat pump. You could have had two Ws. You would have had one more equation, which is W1 equals W2. That's fine. You could do that. That's not a problem. It just clutters the paper. So... I can kind of rearrange this a little bit if I want. I can move Q to the other side, everything's negative, and then I also happen to know what Q is. So at that point, Q dot H is equal to one, which is equal to W plus Q C one. Okay, not bad. Mm, let's do our entropy balance and see if we can get more information. Entropy, so. Um, this was reversible, so we should have written that down at some point, um, that this is reversible, uh, and that sigma is equal to zero for both of these cases, um, sigma dot. So, and I, again, I really want you guys to do this, so I'm going to kind of do this at a top level. We're going to have QH1 over TH1 minus QC1 over TC1 plus sigma is equal to zero, or rearranged, QC1 is equal to TC over TH1 QH. Great. Carrying on. It's basically 500 over 2460 times 1, because that QH was 1 BTU as given. Um, we get that QC is 0 0.203 BTU. And then just plugging back into the original energy balance that we had, W is equal to 1 minus 0 0.203. And we get work is equal to 0 0.797 BTUs. So you get 0 0.797 BTUs per one BTU of heat energy coming in. Great. Now that you have that, the moment you have that, if you look at the right hand side of the problem, you actually have that W. And then everything kind of just falls right into place as one would expect for the heat pump. W, let's do the, uh, sorry, energy balance. Energy balance. W is, e, uh, w. w plus Q C2 is equal to Q H2. Uh, and for the entropy, we know that um, we do have to be a bit careful here with our uh, QH. QH is leaving, um, so there's a couple ways you could do this. I like to start with QH personally, but it doesn't really matter what you do. Negative QH2 over TH2 plus, because it's going into the circle, QC2 over TC2 plus sigma is equal to zero. Now, we already said that this is reversible, so that goes to zero. QC2 is equal to TC2 over TH2, QH2, or 500 over 540 times QH2. OK. 
Okay. What can we do at this point? Look back at your energy balance. And you can see that you already know what work is. Because you already know what work is, you can take this, plug it in here, move that down and resubstitute it into this equation. You'll get 0 0.797 plus 500 over 540 times QH2 is, well, equal to QH2. So QH2 is equal to 110.76 BTUs. Does that answer make sense? First, the signs, right? That's good. Uh, most heat pumps are relatively efficient, so they would uh, actually transmit or be able to pump more heat than the energy input, so that makes sense. Um, we did our, our other sanity check, and of course we could have checked uh, that otherwise, that our QH was equal to our QC plus our W, and that of course made sense as well. So we have a good idea that our answers make sense, and life's good. Okay, well I hope this helps everybody out. Um, Tomorrow's quiz, like I said, will be relatively easy um, after the massacre at quiz five. Um, best of luck and hope you're enjoying these. Uh, I will see you guys tomorrow. Have a wonderful afternoon.